Hey, sis. I'm about to transmit motion to your cart. Are you ready for this? Yay! I'm so excited! Hold on to your horses! Whee! Hey, you know, if we were a technology system, I'd have been the driver and you would have been the driven. I don't know what any of those mean. Oh, sis, nothing to get upset about. Let me explain to you. We're going to have a look at these five different motion transmission systems. A reminder that transmitting motion means that the motion is being transferred from one part to another without modifying the nature of that motion. In a friction gear system, you have two very important components. They're called wheels. It has at least two or more wheels without teeth that roll together. They work using friction. Each wheel goes in a different direction than the other one. So one is going clockwise and one is going counterclockwise. They transmit rotational motion between two or more nearby parts. In a simple gear system, you also have two or more gears that come in contact and mesh together. It looks a little bit like the friction gear system, but with one very important difference. A simple gear system has something called teeth. Now, friction gear and simple gear systems are called reversible systems because if you change the wheel that receives the motion, the system will still work, it will just go in the opposite direction. You're probably familiar with simple gear systems, even from looking inside watches and clocks. Now, something I should mention about transmission systems is that you get speed changes. This is one of the things that occur if your components, the driver and driven, are different sizes. You can find the gear ratio by using the formula the number of the teeth on the driver divided by the number of the teeth on the driven. You can see how much faster or slower the driven one is. Now there's a general rule that the smaller the gear, the more turns it will make and the faster its speed. Now let's look at pulley and belt systems. Pulley and belt literally tells you what the components in the system are. Now these two wheels, instead of called wheels like they are called in friction gear, they're called pulleys. And this system actually does have an intermediate. This belt connects the two components. The pulleys must have a smooth surface for the belt not to break. Notice that friction gear and belt and pulley are almost the same except that in belt and pulley there is a distance between the driver and driven and there is the intermediate belt connecting them. Also, when the two components, like the pulleys, are far apart from one another, the pulleys end up actually going in the same rotational motion. So they're either both clockwise or counterclockwise. Chain and sprocket is another one of those systems which whose name tells you exactly what the components are. So each one of these wheels with teeth is called a sprocket and it is connected not by a simple belt but by a chain. Once again, don't confuse belt and pulley and chain and sprocket. Belt and pulley are, you know, smooth around the pulleys and around the belt, but chain and sprocket you're dealing with chains and teeth. It is anything but smooth. Last but not least, we have the worm and worm gear system. In a worm and worm gear system, you do not have an intermediate. Both gears touch each other. You have a worm, which is the rod, called otherwise known as the shaft, and you have a worm gear, which is this more circular thing with teeth. The teeth of each component need to slide into each other. So in gears with teeth, in systems that have teeth, it is very important that the teeth are spaced out evenly among each other. It needs to be consistent or the system will not work. I hope you learned a great deal about motion transmission systems today. If you look around, you'll find them all around you. I'm only three, so I'm not sure I understand everything, but I understand driver and driven. Can you be my driver again?